Welcome to the Doc is In. My name is Stephen Grubmeyer. I'm the Institute Chair for the Oncology Institute at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi at the Fatima Bent Mubarak Center. I'd like to welcome you to today's session. Unfortunately, all of us have been impacted by cancer in some way, whether it's having the disease ourselves or caring for a family member or friend who's had cancer. There's a lot, rightfully so, of focus on treating cancer itself today and diagnosing it earlier and we're having a lot of success. There's a lot of excitement in oncology today because of many of the new treatments that we have that are improving the rates of cure and reducing the side effects of treatment. And with that, we're seeing patients now living longer. And uh, at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we're now focused on taking care of patients specifically after a cancer diagnosis and treatment. And this is called our Longevity Medicine Clinic. Today, we're fortunate to have Dr. Fawad Khan join us. Dr. Fawad is head of our Longevity Medicine Clinic. And today, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Fawad about longevity medicine, his background, and how the work that he and his team are doing are improving the care of our patients and helping them live long and happy lives. So welcome, Dr. Fawad. Uh, it's nice of you to join us. I'd like to begin by uh, having you tell the audience about your background and experience. We're very fortunate here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi to have very specialized physicians like you with extensive training in specialized areas that really allows our patients to get the best care. So if you could briefly tell us about your background and your interest in longevity medicine and, and uh, how you enjoy working with the patients in the longevity medicine clinic. Well, thank you for having me here. Uh, my background is that I've done uh, family medicine training back in the UK um, in 2008 and worked as a consultant of uh, family medicine uh, for many years. Um, I then did a fellowship uh, in medical breast focused in the cancer survivorship care and genomics uh, from Cleveland Clinic, uh, Ohio. And, um, and that's where I really developed a special interest in managing uh, patients uh, who've had cancer and also uh, developed interest in the precision prevention area uh, when it comes to cancer care. Um, in 2022, uh, we started our cancer survivorship service, which we later uh, rebranded uh, as Longevity Medicine. And, and it was uh, after we um, discussed with our key stakeholder, which is our patients and, and their families. We are very fortunate to have a patient and family advisory group here uh, where we meet them on a regular basis and we discuss uh, new programs and, um, and we came up with the name of Longevity Medicine, which resonated better uh, with the service we are providing, which is keeping our cancer patients live healthier and longer. Thank you. Uh, in the United States, uh, many of us are familiar with this uh, concept of a survivorship clinic. Um, and we certainly believe in the principles that are um, um, addressed in a survivorship clinic. But are there things that you do specifically in longevity medicine, medicine clinic that go beyond what's done in a standard uh, cancer survivorship clinic? We are uh, proud to share that we are very unique in a number of ways um, because um, our service is physician-led and our focus uh, uh, is on a number of areas of longevity. And some of the key areas I would like to mention would be to start with managing in a very comprehensive way the adverse effects of cancer treatment then ongoing surveillance for our patients. And this sometimes could be in collaboration with our cancer experts. Um, that would be our medical or surgical oncologists. Um, the next very key area, which makes us even more unique, is the personalized risk assessment, which we do for every single patient. Uh, as we know that uh, there are a number of hereditary cancers, uh, which may and some cancers may make up to 15% of the causes. And so therefore, patients who have relevant family history of cancers um, might be eligible for genetic testing. So we 
do a detailed risk assessment on each single patient and see if they meet the criteria for genetic testing and to look for any hereditary cancer syndromes. We know that's important uh, because that can then help us give them targeted cancer treatments, which is what our medical oncologists and surgical oncologists would, would then decide. Also, this helps us to uh, prevent any new cancers. And those patients, if found to be having an abnormal gene, will then ref be referred to our high-risk program. And finally, a holistic care is provided by multiple specialties, um, starting from our uh, specialist physicians, our lifestyle team, our nutritionists, um, our psychologists, our pain team experts, all working together to help patients live healthier and longer. Good. I want to delve in a little bit more to your relationship with the specific uh, cancer uh, disease specific teams that we're fortunate to have at Fatima Bent Mubarak Center. Treating cancer uh, in different parts of the body often involves different types of treatment. Some patients need radiation, some patients need different types of chemotherapy and targeted therapy and hormonal therapy. But could you tell us a little more specifically how you work with the teams to design personalized plans that it's not a one size fits all, but it's tailored to the specifics of the cancer treatment that a patient received? Thank you for that question. Each cancer longevity medicine program is designed after consultation and working closely with the disease with each disease expert. So for instance, when it comes to the breast cancer longevity program, this was designed after consultations with our experts in Cleveland Clinic, Ohio, and then making it more tailored to the needs of our patients in the UAE. Uh, we sat with our experts here and combining their expert opinion along with the clinical guidelines, we've come up with a program and we work very closely with our medical oncologists, our surgical oncologists, our radiation oncologists, and then with a wider team of physical therapists, the lifestyle physicians, um, and, and so many other specialties involved in taking care of these patients each patient is given at the start of their uh, visit a care plan summary. This care plan summary would go into the details of what the patient has, what type of cancer they have, what type of treatment they will be receiving, what follow-ups will they have going forward. And a copy of this is given to the patient and one is retained for all the specialists involved in the care of these patients. Um, and, and therefore, each of the other disease programs like colorectal uh, and then blood cancer program, et cetera, all are designed in a similar fashion. I know that um, cancer can have a, a large psychologic impact on patients and their families. And, and for instance, uh, depression and anxiety can be um, uh, major challenges for people who've been through cancer treatment. So is that something you see in the, in the longevity clinic and, and how does you and your team specifically address that? Um, mental health uh, concerns are uh, commonly seen. Um, these often um, are noticed when the patients complete their active treatment, such as uh, usually at the end of six months uh, after completing the surgery, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy. That's usually when the dust settles and the patients would get a moment to reflect on what has happened over the previous six months. And that's where the longevity medicine uh, clinic plays an important role. Um, the anxiety and some patients may end up having mild symptoms of depression uh, these can also have a knock-on effect on the sleep and the functional status of the patients. Um, it can impact the quality of life by um, impacting negatively on their work and their physical symptoms as well. Um, and uh, we do have a comprehensive program to manage the mental health concerns um, with close collaboration with our mental health team, um, which have psychiatrists, psychologists, um, and then 
with the help of our lifestyle specialists, uh, where we offer patients to go on healthy lifestyle behaviors. Um, we also, in these patients, will involve sometimes the pain team uh, to also help a better with better pain control because we know that chronic pain can also have impact on anxiety and other mental health uh, symptoms. So together we we work in uh, alleviating some of these concerns and really improve the quality of life for these patients. When um, what we've seen over the years is that when patients go through um, cancer treatment, sometimes they feel like they've lost control because maybe they're being prescribed a certain course of treatment or radiation. And um, it's always nice to return some of that control back to the patient. And uh, one way we do that is through lifestyle modification. So what are some of the things that you advise patients to do in terms of things that they can directly control in terms of their diet and exercise? And how do you guide patients uh, in terms of that as part of their uh, longevity programming? There is increasing evidence from research that a number of healthy lifestyle behaviors can reduce not only the recurrence of cancers, but also prevent new cancers. And we offer patients right from the time of diagnosis uh, to look at some of these healthy behaviors. These mainly include regular exercise, healthier diet, <clears throat> Um, reduction of alcohol, um, preferably less than seven units a week. When it comes to exercise, we are fortunate to have a lifestyle um, team of specialists, uh, which has physicians, uh, we have uh, exercise coach, nutritionist, psychologists there who work together to promote the, the program there. We recommend, <clears throat> sorry, a minimum of 150 minutes a week of exercise with minimum of walking and uh, aiming to scale it up to 300 minutes a week uh, of a combination of aerobics and strength training. When it comes to healthier diet, um, briefly we recommend reducing the uh, red meat intake and uh, focusing and increasing more on the vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and and this is taken in great detail uh, by our nutritionists. Is there an ideal time for patients to be seen in the longevity medicine clinic? And can patients who've had cancer treatment in another country or outside of our Fatima Bent Mubarak Center, are they eligible to come and uh, join the longevity medicine program? We introduce our patients to the longevity medicine program right uh, after their diagnosis. Um, However, because there are multiple treatments and clinic appointments at the time of soon after diagnosis, um, we often see these patients towards the end of the six months um, where they need the uh, support from longevity, longevity medicine the most. What we do is we typically would put a follow-up of six months for the first five years for these patients. Some are seen more frequently because of the new treatments we start them on. And then after the first five years, we see them annually for another five years. And thereafter, it is depending on the needs of the patients, we either discharge them or keep them on our program. We welcome patients who've had treatment outside, whether in the UAE or abroad, to join our program because we understand that their healthcare needs do not end once the active cancer treatment is done. And we are here to support patients both um, within the UAE or abroad. And we have a number of patients who come and attend our longevity medicine program. It's an exciting time in the development of a new technology with uh, all that's coming with advances in genomics, artificial intelligence, uh, precision medicine. And I know um, outside the, our longevity medicine clinic in the space of longevity in general, there's a lot of these new exciting technologies being applied to uh, longevity in general. So are you able to incorporate some of those uh, particular technologies, artificial intelligence, genomics, uh, sequencing, precision medicine, 
into what you're able to provide? And how do you see this playing a role in improving in the future even more how we're able to provide longevity care to patients who've been through cancer treatment? We are using specific biomarkers uh, in the longevity medicine clinic. The one that we use is metabolic bi biomarkers, uh, which include uh, lipids, glucose to manage the metabolic syndrome of the patients. The other biomarkers such as inflammatory biomarkers and epigenetic biomarkers are under research and we hope that in the future they will be playing an important role in the clinical care. There are also proteomics which are under research and uh, we feel that in combination with metabolomics, uh, with epigenomics, with genomics and wearables, as combination, they will be able to help us with better risk assessment of our patients and so that we can play, put them on uh, prevention programs. At the moment, we are using genomics for our patients to identify if they have any genetic variants, which will then help them on uh, receiving appropriate cancer treatment and also putting them on precision prevention programs for other types of cancer that they might be at risk of. And we hope to include um, the use of AI in the future as it develops. And we're working closely with our uh, stakeholders at M42 to constantly evolve our program. So we are able to uh, put our patients on these precision prevention programs. We continue to have a proactive approach on that. Yeah, we're very fortunate here to have as part of the M42 network, our colleagues at M42 who do have access to the latest genomic um, proteomics and, and other technology. So um, tell us about your relationship with that team and uh, how you see leveraging that relationship to continue to create this uh, really unique program here. We are extremely fortunate to have them uh, as our uh, key partner in developing our precision medicine program. Um, we collaborate very closely in doing the genomic testing for our patients, which is done, done in a timely manner. It helps us to do appropriate risk assessment uh, with patients who do not have cancer. And for patients who have had cancer, we get the uh, results in time to make more appropriate treatment decisions, both medical as well as surgical. And they also help us to prevent future cancers for these patients. So this uh, relationship is extremely important to us and it's not only restricted or limited to the clinical side. Uh, we have a number of research uh, programs going on uh, where we are looking at newer technologies um, that we can incorporate. Um, and we hope to uh, offer those to our patients in the clinical care after they have been valid validated through appropriate research. Thank you, for Dr. Fouad, for all you do for our patients and the community. And again, I know this has been a very valuable uh, discussion for the audience. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for joining the doctors in today.